We shall wait and see what the uh, current Chancellor decides to do. But let's find out what a former Chancellor thinks he should be doing. Delighted to welcome Conservative MP, former Chancellor of the Exchequer, Sajid Javid, to the show. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for Good, having me on. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, well, you have uh, been uh, a part of a re- writing a report uh, along with the Centre for Policy Studies, publishing your report after the virus today, uh, looking at, well, how we can grow our way out of this crisis. And your view is that the only way out is through growth, certainly not austerity. Tell us what your plan is. Well, that's right. I've been working with the CPS for a couple of months now on putting together a plan for recovery, a set of ideas, over 60 ideas. And uh, there's a lot in there. But one of the first things that we start with is just the principles for for growth, uh, which are, to be clear, that, yes, this crisis changes a lot of things, but it doesn't change how our economy grows. And that means that we need a sort of free enterprise competitive system with low taxes, sound public finances. And then we go out to set out a, a, a bunch of ideas and, and taking your first point about growth rather than austerity, it would be wrong to try and cut back on spending at this point. I think it would just blow out any kind of growth that we had over the next uh, few months. But eventually, of course, you want to bring public finances uh, under balance. And so what we say is that you shouldn't try to balance what's called day-to-day spending until we get back to the pre-crisis level of uh, national income. So that's the uh, first sort of rule we set out because I think that will make it clear to people what your intentions are. Then we set out a bunch of tax cuts because they'll be quick and effective, a temporary cut in national insurance, so the payroll tax, a cut in VAT, and not to look to increase any taxes because, again, I think that would be self-defeating. And then there's a lot of uh, discussion in the paper about major infrastructure projects, not just doing more, but also delivery, how you can bring things forward, what kind of changes you need to make to planning rules, how you can devolve more of that decision making at the local level. And then finally, we turn to monetary policy, which is uh, the work of the Bank of England. And it does a great job uh, and its independence is crucial. uh, But uh, we set out how you might want to change its mandate to something called nominal GDP targeting. Um, that's because the mandate for the Bank of England setting interest rates and the like is all about inflation. That's their only consideration. And you think it should be more about uh, growth and jobs? Yeah, the, the mandate it's got at the moment, as you say, it, inflation, it's hugely important. We control that. No one would argue with that. But it, you could describe it as quite narrow. So it doesn't really look at the whole economy and what nominal GDP is thinking of as all spending, uh, all the output in an economy. And if the Bank of England is, is focused on that, then I just think it has more of an impact on, on sort of real society, real life. OK, well, look, look, a lot of people will be welcome, especially those business owners who are really, you know, just struggling to get to uh, get, stay afloat right now, be desperate to hear about tax cuts like in national insurance and VAT and certainly not to hear about tax increases. Uh, but you say, you know, th- there shouldn't be any cutting back in public spending uh, until we hit uh, the pre-crisis levels. When do you expect us to go back to that sort of level? Because there was this talk about this V-shape, uh, you know, uh, a crisis in, in terms of our economy. We have certainly went down on the V. The question mark now is how, how much we can go back up the V and whether or not it's going to be a U-shape, an L-shape and then the like. When do you think we're going to get back to the pre-crisis level? Look, great question, but I think very, very difficult uh, to answer. You know, of course, we would all say we want to get growth going as quickly as possible, you know, get back to those levels as quickly as we can. But we also all know that just in the last week, we've had the Office of National Statistics say that the economy in two months contracted by a quarter. I mean, that's, think of it this way. That's about 18 years of growth gone in two months. And so we've got a, a big mountain to climb. We're heading in the right direction. We're already starting to see the economy pick up. The relaxation, you know, you started a moment ago in your uh, news report about perhaps we can all eventually get to restaurants and pubs and things which will be great that's going to help the economy ha- hairdressers uh, hairdressers even well well <laughs> not something i'm eager that eager to to look but I, I get it but we want to you know, that that's great and and also if i can say what the chancellor has done so far in protecting the economy you know the furlough program the tax breaks for businesses that's excellent. I mean, he's done absolutely the, 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 uh, taken the right approach and I have nothing but praise for what he's done. But I know that he will be looking ahead 
So how do we really get growth motoring? Well, there's no doubt, Rob, you, look, you have been full of praise in, in recent months for what Rishi Sunak, your, your successor, has done. But is there anything you would have done differently? Um, no, I, I, honestly, I can't, I can't think, you know, if I sat here for ages and, you know, I'm sure I, uh, you know, anyone can go to one or two small things, but the, it's what matters is the big picture. And um, Rishi, with the, with the team at the Treasury, they've taken the right approach, which was to, to accept that we're right as a country, of course, to put public health first. But when you stop consumers from consuming, producers from producing, of course, you're going to get an economic crisis. And during that time, you want to almost sort of freeze the economy so you can unfreeze it you know, slowly once things are getting back to normal. And that's what he's done. And full credit to the team for that. Does your response to this crisis and indeed the response of the, the existing government, does that tell us that actually the decision making in 2010 by David Cameron was wrong and that actually we shouldn't have had austerity then to do with the banking crisis? No, I don't think it, it says that at all, because every every. Your crisis, every economic crisis is, 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 is different, of course. But this one, I, I think it's fair to say, is completely unprecedented. Never have we had a crisis uh, that is uh, in peacetime that is a direct result of government policy for the right reasons. Uh, it's a crisis that hits not just demand, but obviously the supply of, of goods and services. Uh, but it's also just think how deep it is. It's the deepest in 300 years. Yeah, we it already in two months, this crisis has led to a fall in GDP five times more than what we saw in the previous crisis. So this is not a time to sort of look back, I think, at previous crisis and say, look, we should have done this, should have done that. In fact, whatever you know, what David Cameron, George Osborne did, it got our economy motoring again. We've you know, got to a level of uh, unemployment, which has been the envy of Europe. Uh, uh, but now, Sadly, unemployment is rising again. And that's, again, why this brings me to growth and jobs. That's how we get out of this crisis. Um, can I also ask you, not just a former Chancellor, of course, former Home Secretary, about the terror attack in Reading on Saturday night. Three mm. dead. Those victims have now been named. Three others seriously injured. Uh, the suspect, a Libyan uh, refugee. Turns out, you know, again, he'd been in prison recently. Uh, he had been uh, suspected of, of possibly uh, being radicalised. He'd been involved in the Prevent programme. I mean, we now know that the terrorist watch list for MI5 has now doubled to 43,000 people, many of those people abroad, Islamist extremists. Um, what lessons can be learned? Because whenever we have a terror attack, we seem to be told we're going to learn the lessons from this. We're going to deal with this particular issue. And yet these terror attacks do still keep on coming. What should be done to keep us safe? Well, of course, what's happened, like everyone else, I think it's uh, appalling. Always very sad to see this. These three people murdered. And my first thoughts always with, with them, of course, and their families and their loved ones. But your question, what can be done? I'm not going to... You know, second guess what's happened here that's uh, you know, that's not my job but I have nothing but praise for our um, security services, our counter-terrorism policing and one thing I, I do know as a former Home Secretary is that of course you know, when these attacks happen we all see them and uh, we are all appalled by them but what we don't see by definition is the attacks that are stopped mm -hmm. and, and one thing I, I do know and I learned a lot more about are those uh, uh, those attacks that were planned by perhaps people like this, either lone wolves or groups, and it could be Islamist terrorism, right wing, extreme right wing terrorism, but where our security service actually went out and stopped them from happening, and for either confidentiality reasons or other reasons, we can never really sort of go into the detail of them. So I really do think that they, you know, in, in a free society. You know, no security apparatus organization can stop everything. We, I think we all accept that. But they, you know, the security service, I think, deserve our full support and, and praise sometimes for, for all the attacks they do actually manage to stop and save lives. Okay. Sajid Javid, former Chancellor and former Home Secretary, thank you very much indeed for joining us.